timing uh, mount table is so much so much you know rituals that that go around in base camp before you mm-hmm. summit and mm-hmm. people have always regarded the mountains as something very spiritual mm-hmm. and something which is mm-hmm. which has a lot of uh, you know um, tradition <coughs> that is, yes. you know uh, the, the shopa culture is that's right uh, respect the mountains uh, do you think do you do you think there is something uh, beyond you know the common knowledge or something that 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 is very much very closely associated with the mountain which i think only some people who have closely lived and interacted with the mountains mm-hmm. and feel you know that connection and something i mean i i know this is a very personal question and no uh, not at all probably no. something that i could not people would want to share uh, yeah what is your thought of it? absolutely yeah uh, and some things can cannot be conveyed through words but can only be experienced and i've had many such beautiful experiences in the mountains which people may call it spiritual or mythical or whatever i i don't like to give it names because if you give it a name you put it in a compartment and the beauty of it goes away but of course there is something in the himalayas uh, especially in the himalayas uh, you know there's a rich spiritual history of a lot of enlightened beings a lot of enlightened yogis being in those regions and when a realized master when a realized person walks a path is in that area for eternity he has he or she has left his residual imprints kahi na kahi wo spiritual seeds wahan pe wo chhod ke jate hai if you have that perception you can take benefits of it you can experience it and you can enhance your spiritual growth by the by you know uh, their presence which has uh, they have their aura there you know I- even after thousands of years yes so many of these people you can experience there in form in the form of energy in the form of their presence and i think I, in in uh, when i went for my uh, expedition in uttarakhand in winter i experienced on one of the nights a very very powerful presence of a being there uh, who you know i don't know anything about him or her or but but i knew that whoever he she was in whatever time time is not re- relevant in the world of energy he, he must have been yeah. a very powerful presence and his presence was still to be felt there and you don't do anything you just sit and take it all in and just experience what it means what it is to you know wow i don't have the right words right now but it, you feel the presence even in the annapurna region it's one of the most spiritually rich uh area in the himalayas the annapurna valley and the just that whole valley just that whole mountain is pulsating with very high energy very high spiritual energy and only if you are able to perceive it only if you have that dose of perception open what do i mean by that right now what we perceive the world is through the five senses the eyes the nose the you know the what you see what you smell what you taste what you touch and what you hear there is a dimension there is a sense of perception which is beyond these five senses which is not physical and it takes a little stillness within it takes a little silence of your mind silence of your emotions for that dimension to open up and i think most people are too caught up in their thoughts too caught up in their emotions and are completely involved in this psychological world that they completely miss something which is beyond the physical and psychological perception and yes i have felt this i have felt it too many times uh you know if i go on talking about this i we can go on for hours but i think himalayas is yeah. something i think i think himalayas is something that uh, everybody in their life must go and experience it doesn't matter if your perceptions of that dimension is open or no just by going there you can be benefited by the spiritual seeds that these masters have left behind why do you think all the pilgrimage like 
not all most of the pilgrimages are in the himalayan ranges because it's not because of some religious belief you know this has nothing to do with what you believe what she or he believes no in that particular region in that particular place the spiritual history is such that the that particular place is vibrating with a certain energy that you can benefit for your spiritual growth that's why you go there unfortunately this essence has been lost by people and it has completely been converted into belief system and you know people believe that so many things like this belief is something which is blocking their perception they are already going there thinking believing something if you already go there with with a conclusion you won't be open to what is to be offered you know what that place has to offer so you know for example people go to uh, uh, kedarnath i haven't been there but i know why kedarnath is <laughs> what it is you know why it is so so much spiritually important events have happened up there that if you go there just by being there in that place you can be tremendously benefited in ways that you cannot imagine it is not about going to that particular mandir that temple and bowing down to shiva and praying for your well being or success or money or get a good wife get a good husband get a good job that place it's not made for these things it is just made it is just consecrated to take you to the next level and uh, so many enlightened masters have walked in that region that if you really really care for your spiritual growth i think just by going there you don't have to go there and chant om namah shivaya or whatever no don't do anything just be there present for what that valley has as to offer just be open to it and i think then himalayas would transform their lives whoever goes there <laughs>